In this video, I'm going to present a very useful theorem known as the divergence theorem that can result in more efficient computations of certain surface integrals. So in the last video, we found that the divergence of a vector field V, which we defined as the volume density of outward flux from a small volume delta tau about some point, could be calculated as the sum of partial derivatives like so. So the divergence of V was equal to this sum. Before getting into the details of the divergence theorem, I'd like to show you an example of what this looks like. So over here, we have a vector field, uh, the following vector field, cosine of x plus two y in the i hat direction and sine of x minus two y in the j hat direction. And it results in a vector field that looks something like that. So you get this kind of flowy pattern across space. If you calculate the divergence of this vector field, you get uh, the following color map. So the arrows from the vector field are still there. The color map indicates the magnitude of the divergence that we calculated. So a positive divergence indicated by uh, yellow to red shows the flow of the arrows going outwards from any volume or area over here. So you can think of it as a source of fluid flow or heat flow or whatever vector field you're considering. In blue, you have regions where the arrows tend to converge as if uh, going down the sink, essentially. So areas of negative divergence indicate regions where uh, the vector field tends to converge. And you can think of it as fluid going down a drain or uh, a concentration of uh, heat flow going inwards into your volume. OK, so this shows then that the divergence is really a measure of the outward flux. If it's positive, uh, your quantity is flowing out. If it's negative, your quantity is flowing into a volume. All right, now to return to this idea of the divergence theorem, uh, another way of stating this using uh, the second part of our definition is that the surface integral over the entire surface enclosing or volume yes this is equal so if you notice you get the same pattern of partial derivative with respect to x plus partial derivative with respect to y plus partial derivative with respect to z so this should remind you of the gradient operator that we saw before and the dot product with our vector field v. Okay, so just to refresh your memory, this gradient operator was a vector with partial derivatives as its components. So the divergence of V can also be computed as the dot product between the gradient operator and your vector field. And in particular, this means that the surface integral over an entire enclosed surface is equal to the divergence times your infinitesimal volume as delta tau goes to zero. And we did this for a infinitesimally small cube where we could uh, approximate its dimensions to be so small that the components of the vector field were essentially constant. In general, we usually work with larger volumes. We, we can't always consider infinitesimally small volume elements. So now, we want to consider the case where we have a larger volume over which we want to calculate the flux. All 
And now for the bigger volume, uh, we're going to call the enclosed surface del S or the surface that's enclosing the volume del S. Then to calculate the rate of flow from the entire volume, so that will be given by the surface integral over del S. So this has to be equal to the sum over several of these small cubes, which we're going to denote uh, their surfaces by S sub I. Okay, so this is, this is the flux through uh, the surface of cube I, of a small cube I that makes up our larger volume uh, that we're considering. Okay, so just as a visual representation, we have some large volume whose entire surface is del S and we're building it up from tiny volumes each one has a surface enclosing that volume as I. So over here, we're just adding the contributions from a whole bunch of these little volumes and we'll eventually make up the larger volume. This, so we still have the sum over all of our surfaces. In the limit where delta tau goes to zero, we found that this was equal to the divergence of the vector field times our, the volume element of each cube. So each cube has a volume delta tau i. And in the limit where delta tau i goes to zero, that means that we this is the same thing as taking the limit where you have infinitely many small cubes breaking up your larger volume V. So this is equivalent once again to an integral and it's a triple integral because you're in three dimensions. So the sum of the limit of infinitely many large things, so you're adding up a bunch of very small cubes or the contribution of the flux over several small cubes. This is equal divergence of V times your volume V. Now there's one small technicality that we skipped and that is when we do the surface integral, you have to take care to consider common surfaces to each one of these. So if this is two per two of these small cubes stacked together then when we calculate all of the surface integrals, the phase that's joining them seems to be repeated. But you what you have to consider is if you're calculating the flux through this cube, the normal vector to that phase is in this direction. And if you're calculating the surface, uh, the flux through this cube for this surface again, the normal vector to that surface is in the opposite direction. Okay, so if we call this n hat one and then hat two, then n hat one is equal to negative n hat two. So what that means is when you calculate the surface integral where the normal is, the out one normal is N1. This is equal to minus the surface integral with respect to the outward normal N2. So that means that all of the contributions from 
common faces completely cancel out. So you're only left with the contributions of flux going through the main faces of your larger volume. All of the other stuff inside with common faces cancels out. So what we're left with then is the surface integral over the, the surface, the, yeah, the surface integral over the area enclosing a volume. Pn ds is equivalent to calculating the volume integral of the divergence of her vector field over that volume. And this result is called the divergence theorem or Gauss's theorem sometimes. And it's useful for reducing complicated calculations by choosing it, choosing one uh, way of calculating over the other. In the next video, we'll go through an example uh, showing this.